I am Tony. My student number is S zero four four one zero zero nine. I'm a sophomore in NCUE. The title of the speech is Adam Galinsky. How to speak up for yourself? S- speaking up is hard to do. I understood the true meaning of this phrase exactly one month ago when my wife and I became new parents. It was an amazing moment. It was. Exhilarating and elate, elating, but it was also scary and terrifying. And it got particularly terrifying when we got home from the hospital and we were unsure whether our little baby was getting enough nu- <laughs> nutrition from breakfast feeding, <laughs> breast from breastfeeding, and we wanted to call our pedi at pediatrician. But we also didn't want to make a bad first in- exper- impression or come across a crazy neurotic parent. So we worried and we waited. When we got to the doctor office the next day, she immediately gave me hi- him for Mula because she he was really he was pretty dehydrated. Our son is fine now, and our doctor. Has reassured us we can always contact her, but in that moment, I should should spoken up, but I didn't. So sometimes we speak up when we shouldn't, and I learned that over ten years ago when I let let my twin brother down. My twin brother is a documentary filmmaker, and for one of the, his first films, he got an offer from a distribution com- company. He was excited, and he was. Inclined to accept the offer, but as a negotiations researcher, I insist he make a counter offer, and I help him craft the perfect one. And it was perfect. It was perfectly insulting. The company was so offended they literally withdraw withdrew the offer, and my brother was left with nothing. And I asked people all over the world about this. Dilemma of speaking up when they can assert themselves, when they can assert the, themselves, when they can push their interests, when they can express an opinion, when when they can make an ambitious talk, and the range of stories are varied and diverse, but they also make up a universal tapestry. Can I correct my boss when they make a mistake? Can I confront my co- coworker who keep keeps stepping on my toes? Can I challenge my friend's insensitive joke? Can I tell the person I love the most my deepest insecurities? <coughs> And through these experiences. I've come to recognize that each of us have something called a range of acceptable behavior. Now, sometimes we're too strong; we push ourselves too much. That was happening, happened with my brother. Even making an offer was outside his range of acceptable, acceptable behavior. But sometimes we're too weak. That's what happened when my wife and, I, and this range of acceptable behavior, when we. Stay with our range, we are rewarded. When we step outside that range, we got punished in a variety of ways. We got dismissed or demeaned, or even ostracized, <coughs> or we lose that ra- that race or that promotion or, or that deal. Now the first thing we need to know is what is my range. But the key thing is our range isn't fixed. It's actually pretty dynamic. It expands and it narrows based on the context. And there is one thing that determines that range more than anything else, and that's your power. Your power determines your range. <coughs> What is power? Power comes in lots of forms. In negotiations, it comes in the form of alternatives. So my brother and I had no altern alternative. He lacked power. The company had. Lots of alter- alternatives, but they have power. Sometimes it's being not new to a country, like a immigrant, 
or new to an organization or new to an experience. Like my wife and I was new parents. Sometimes it's at work where some someone's the boss and someone's the subordinate. Sometimes it is in relationship where one person more invested than the other person. And the key thing is that when we have lots of power, our range is very wide. We have a lot of leeway in how to behave, but when when we lack power, our range narrows. We have very little leeway. The problem is that when our range narrows, the that produces something called the low power double blind bind. The low power double bind happens when if we don't speak up, we go unnoticed. Unnoticed, but if we do speak up, we get punished. Now, many of you have heard the phrase the double bind and connected it w- with one thing, and that's gender. The gender double bind is a woman, women who don't speak up, go unnoticed, and women who who do speak up get punished. And the key is that. Women have the same need as men to speak up, but they have barriers to doing things, doing so. But what my research has shown over the last two decade, decades is that what what looks like a gender difference is not really a gender double bind. It's a really it's re- a really a low power double bind, and what looks like a gender difference are really often just power differences in disguise. Oftentimes, we we see a difference between a man and a woman, or men and women, and think biological cause. There's something fundamentally different about the sexes, but in study after study, I found that a better explanation for many sex difference is really power, and so it's a low power double blind bind, and the uh, low power double bind means that we have a narrow range and we lack power. We have a narrow range, and our double, and our double bind is very large. So we need to find ways to expand our range. And over the last couple of decades, my colleagues and I have found two things really matter. The first, you seem powerful in your own eyes. The second, you seem powerful in the eyes of others. When I feel powerful, I feel confident, not fearful. I expand my own range. When other people see my me as powered, they grant me a wider range. So we need tools to expand our range of acceptable behavior. And I'm going to give you a set of tools today. Speaking up is risky, but these tools will lower the risk of speaking up. The the first the first the first tool I'm going to give you. To give you got discovered in negotiation is an important finding. On average, women l- make less ambitious offers and get worse outcomes than men at the bargaining table. Than men at the bargaining table. But Hannah Riley Bowles and Emily Amantula have discovered there's one situation where women. Get the same outcomes as men and are just as ambitious. That's why they advocate for others. When they advocate for others, they discover their own range and expand it in their own mind. They became they become more assertive. This is sometimes called the mama bear effect, like a mama bear defending her cubs. When we advocate for others, we can discover. Our own voice, but sometimes we have to advocate for ourselves. How do we do that? One of the most important tools we have to advocate for ourselves is something called perspective talking. And perspective talking is really simple. It's simple looking at the world's world, world through the eyes of another person. It's one of the most important tools we have to expand our range. When I take your perspective, and I think about what you really want, you're more likely to give me what I really want. 
But here's the problem: Pers perspective talking is hard to do. So let's do a little experiment. I want you all to hand hold your hand just like this. Your finger, put it up, and I want to draw a capital letter E on your forehead as quickly as possible. Okay. It turns out that we can draw this E in one of two ways. <coughs> and this was originally designed as a test of perspective talking. I'm going to show you two pictures of some one with an E on their forehead. My former students, Erica Kaw, and you can see over here, that's the correct E. I drew the E so it looks like an E to another person. That's a perspective talking E because it looks like an E from someone else vantage point but this E over here is the second self-focused E we often get self-focused and we particularly get self-focused in a crisis I want to tell you about a particular crisis a man walks into a bank in Wasovili, California and he says give me two two thousand dollar or I'm blowing the whole bank up with a bump. Now the bank manager didn't give him the money. She took a step back. She took his per perspective and she noticed something really important. He asked for a specific, specific amount of money. And so she said, why did you ask for 2000? And he said, my friend is going to be ev evicted unless I get him $2,000 immediately. And she said, oh, you don't want to rob a bank. Bank. You want to take a take out a loan. Left her. Why do you come back to my office and we have you fill out the paperwork? Left her. Now, her quick perspective talking diffuse a violet volatile situation. So when we take someone's perspective, it allows us to be ambitious and assertive, but still be likable. Here's another way to be assertive but still be likable, and this is so to signal flexibility. Now imagine you're a car salesman, salesperson, and you want to sell someone a car. You're going to more likely make a sale if you give them two options. That's option A. Let's say option A. Twenty-four thousand for this car, and a five-year warranty, or option B. 23,000 and a 3 year warranty. My research shows that when you give people a choice among options, it lowers their defense and they're more likely to accept your offer. And this doesn't just work with salespeople, it works with parents. When my niece was four, she resists get, getting dressed and rejected everything. But then my sister in law had a brilliant idea. What they gave if I gave my daughter a choice, this skirt or that skirt? Okay, that skirt. This pen or that pen? Okay, that pen. And it worked brilliantly. She got dressed quickly and without resistance. When I've asked a question around the world when people feel comfortable speaking up, number one answer is when I have social support in my audience, when I have Alice. So we want to get Alice on our side. How do we do that? Well, one of the ways is, um, is be a mama bear. When we advocate for others, we spend our ranging our own eyes and the eyes of others, but we also earn strong allies. Another way we can earn strong allies, especially in high places, is asking other people for advice. When we ask, for, uh, ask others for advice, they like us because we flatter them and we express humility. And this really works to solve another double bind. And that's a self-promotion double bind. The self-promotion double bind is that we don't <coughs> advertise our accomplishment. No one notices. And if we do, we're not likable. But if, if we ask for advice about one of our accomplishments, we are able to be com competent in their eyes, but also be likable. And this is so powerful, it even works when you see it coming. There have been multiple times in life when I have been forewarned 
that a low power person has has been given the advice to come ask me for advice. I want you to notice three things about this. First, I knew they were going to ask me for advice. Two, I've actually done research on the strategic benefit of asking for advice. And three, it still worked. I took their perspective. I became more in- invested in their cases. I became more committed to them because they asked for my advice. <coughs> now, another time we feel more confident speaking up is when we have expertise. Expertise gives us credibility. Then we have a high power. We already have credibility. We only need good advance evidence when we lack power and we don't have the credibility we need excellent credibil- evidence and one of the ways we can come across as an expert is tapping in your passion into your passion i want everyone in the next few days to go up to friends of theirs and just to say to them i want you to describe a passion of yours to me. I've had people do this all over the world and I ask them, what did you notice about the other person when they described it, their passion? And the answer are always the same. Their eyes is bit up and got big. They smile a big beaming smile. They use their hands all over. I had to duck because their hands were coming at me. They talk quickly with a little higher pitch, laughter. They learn as if telling me a secret. And then I said to them, what happened to you as you listen to their passion? They said, man, I sniff up, I smell, I learned it. I learned in. We tap into our passion, we give ourselves the courage it, in our own eyes to speak up, but we also get the permission from others to speak up. Tap, tapping into our passion even work, works when we come across as too weak. Both men and women get published at work when they shed tears. But Dizzy Wolf has shown that when we frame our strong emotion as as passion, the condemnation condemnation, condemnation of our crying disappears for both men and women. I want to end with a few words from my late late father then that he spoke at my twin brother wedding brother's weddings. He's a here's a picture of us. My dad was a psychologist but he his real love and his real passion was cinema, like my brother. And so he wrote a speech for my brother's wedding about the roles we play in the human comedy. And he said, The higher you touch the better you become in improving and enriching you were perform- performers. Those who embrace their loss and work to improve their performance goals, grow, change and exp- expand their the, the self. Play it well and your days will be mostly joyful. What my brother dad was saying is that we've all been assigned ranges and roles in this world. But he was also saying that uh, the essence of this talk those roles and ranges are constantly expanding and evolving. evolving. So when a sin calls for it, be a ferocious mama bear and a humble advice seeker. Have excellent evidence and strong allies. Be a passionate perspective taker. And if you use these tools, tools and each and every one of you can use these tools. You will spend your range of acceptable behavior and your days will be mostly joyful. Thank you. Applause.